Welcome to our summer 2022 exhibit of photos from the 1959 Visitor's Days of Yarmouth. This collection came together from a gift that we received in May 2021 from the Maine Vintage Race Car Association. Their historian had received a batch of about 8,000 negatives, most of which related to vintage auto racing, uh, but he found a small selection of images that related to Yarmouth instead. He found parade scenes, was able to identify a few businesses in Yarmouth, saw the floats in the parade that were advertising businesses here, and knew that they didn't belong with his collection and so offered them to us for our collection. And of course, we said yes. So we ended up receiving about 110 negatives. And through archival research in our collection, looking at our um, collection of uh, newspaper articles from the notes, which we've digitized, we were able to identify the scenes depicted in these negatives as uh, the 1959 Visitor's Day in Yarmouth. This was a precursor to the Clam Festival and it was part of a series of events that were put together in the late 50s and early 60s that really invited visitors into Yarmouth and boosted local businesses and gave rise to the Clam Festival in the mid 1960s. So we decided to really showcase these images which are beautiful, beautifully composed, they're full of details. We had them all scanned, we printed them on large scale foam board and mounted an exhibit this summer so that folks could see these images up close. One of the great things that's come out of this show is the fact that we've invited folks to come in and help us identify people in the images because we didn't have any identifications when we put this um, collection together. So it's been great to collect oral histories and to really put some names to faces uh, with this collection. So it's really been a, a great community effort. So we believe most of the photos in this collection were taken by Bobby Wynn, who was a member of the North Yarmouth Academy class of 1958 and a resident of East Main Street. So the Boy Scout photo that we have on display, we didn't know anyone in this photo initially, but based on visitors coming in, we were able to identify all of the people in this photo. Um, we know that they are from left to right, David True, Philip Nason and Wendell Lewis. We do not yet know the name of the person on the right, so if anyone is watching this and knows who that is, please let us know here at the History Center. We'd love to find out. These Boy Scouts are probably part of an earlier event. This is probably a little bit earlier than the 1959 Visitor's Day, so this may be 1955, perhaps a Memorial Day celebration and they are standing towards the back of the Baptist Cemetery on Hillside Street as a commemorative event. All right, we have a beautiful aerial view of the parade. And again, this is a scene that visitors have helped us identify as being probably about 1955, a Memorial Day parade. It's an unusual perspective taken from the Route 1 bridge looking down on Main Street. And it can be kind of tricky for a lot of visitors to identify. So looking at it, off to the right, that's the library lawn. To the left, that's the front yard of the town hall. But when the photo was taken, it would have been the site of the old schoolhouses there on Main Street. Another big part of the 1959 Visitor's Days focused on the river. There were a lot of boat demonstrations, uh, water skiing events, and just uh, fly fishing demonstrations and just general use of the river. So this scene shows one of the boat parade uh, members that was put together as part of the coronation of the Festival Queen for the show. Uh, that bridge is the East Elm Street Bridge that you're seeing there. Uh, we have a lot of photos in this collection showing water skiing demonstrations as well, which I do not recommend, uh, but really seem to have been a great draw for the festival at the time. The Beauty Queen competition ended up culminating with the coronation of Linda DeLorme as the Festival Queen in 1959. So as part of the festival on the Friday night of the visitor's celebration, there was a band concert organized in the front terrace of Merrill Memorial Library. This was broadcast live on WPOR, which shows the regional reach and attraction this festival held for the area. It wasn't just for Yarmouth folks, it really was for the whole region. We have a lot of photos of the parade that was a big part of the 1959 Visitor's Days, and visitors to the History Center this summer have helped us identify uh, a number of people in these photos. This is Mike Burnham riding his big bike advertising Down East Village, which was a motel on Route 1. This view of the Yarmouth ladder truck probably came from a slightly earlier celebration, maybe around 1955. 
and it's a wonderful view capturing details of life in Yarmouth in the 1950s. A lot of the kids on the truck are holding posters that are all about preventing forest fires and it's just full of these wonderful details. There were a lot of events for kids during the 1959 Visitors' Days, and this scene, we believe, is the registration for the Horribles Parade, which is a kids' costume parade. And it looks like registration took place right on the front lawn of NYA. And maybe some of these kids are entering pets in the dog show, too. It looks like a few of them have a few friends with them. So this is one of our favorite images in the show. It's become kind of a staff favorite and a visitor favorite. This woman snapped as she's crossing the road, just it seems as if the parade is about to come down the street. Um, I love the way the photographer has composed this scene. She's kind of stopped in motion, rushing to get her dog, one of whom looks like he's escaped her. Uh, she's got her Scotty dog tucked under her arm and looks to have put on some uh, Scottish tans and plaid maybe to, to bring her good luck in the dog show. We don't yet know who this woman is, so if anyone sees her and knows who that is, please let us know. We'd love to figure that out. Another part of the 1959 Visitor's Day celebration was the dog show, which drew adults and kids to Bennett Field. Uh, we have been able to identify one of the members of the scene in this photo. The person in the striped shirt is Meryl Baker Chapin, and that is her golden retriever, Rusty, participating in this dog show. The Kids Horribles Parade was a great fun part of the 1959 Visitor's Day and in this photo we have a couple of kids all dressed up for the costume parade and a parent ready with the camera. Uh, it's funny to look at some of the uh, programs that we have in our collection because in one of them someone has noted that the Horribles Parade wasn't very horrible so it must have been a little bit more cute than scary. Many of the images in the collection that was donated from the Vintage Race Car Association are images of parade floats. This image shows the Harriman's IGA float that was part of the 1959 Visitor's Day Parade. In this photo, we have Jane Small with her horse Golden Minute. Uh, Jane's father, Howard Small, was a major force in organizing the 1959 Visitor's Days, as well as a couple of the successive festivals and celebrations that came afterwards. He put on the Vacation Land Fair at his racetrack, which is near where Garmin is today. Jane was able to pay us a visit earlier this summer, identified herself in this photo, and posed for a picture with it. So it was really wonderful to see these photos come to life with visitors um, being able to identify themselves in them. Local groups and sports teams also participated in the 1959 Visitor's Day Parade and we have here a scene of the Yarmouth Lions Little League team marching with their coaches and what looks to be their ball boy right out front. In other photos we can see him, uh, we can see the number on his jersey. It's actually not a whole number, it's just one half I think to account for his smaller size than the rest of the team. This is one of my favorite photos in this collection. I love the juxtaposition of the old church architecture in the background, that's First Parish Church on Main Street, and the modern kitchen on display in the float that's advertising the O'Brien Homes business, which is located on Spring Street in Yarmouth. 